really excited to have this guy in with me today, sitting here with us. I didn't know if he'd still be in town, but he is. He had an amazing display of his artwork here in Vegas over the weekend, which is just, um, I got a lot of blank walls in this place, so I might have to talk to him about <laughs> yeah, making a deal and see what I can do to spruce things up. Um, I can only work Amazon so many times, but <laughs> joining me now is current Aerosmith drummer and artist John Douglas. Good to see you, man. Thanks, Eddie. It's Thank you for you. being here. Yeah. Thank you you uh, had a great night there Saturday, it looked like. Everybody uh, really enjoyed themselves. It was a great turnout. I was super flattered and un- honored that everybody uh, showed up, had some rock and roll uh, royalty there unexpectedly. Um, yeah, it was, it was hard work for me, man. Well, imagine, so tying in with that a little bit, obviously... This whole residency, and you're currently playing with Aerosmith, didn't wrap up the way you had all hoped it would. No, uh, in, understatement. In, yeah, <laughs> in typical Aerosmith fashion, I think. There's something right. that always go wrong, right? But obviously, the last four shows being lost because of Steven. Um, what can you tell us about all that first? Because that did impact your art thing, because Steven was supposed to be there. Uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly, I can't, I can't, I don't know much, you know, I mean, it, 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 like you said, it was not anything that anybody in the band wanted to do. I mean, it's ultimately health comes first. Right. And, you know, unfortunately with singers, as you know, it's like any, everything goes for the throat, you know, uh, the rest of us, we can muddle through, you know, if you're, uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell you because uh, I don't, I don't know much. Um, but he would. The reason why I bring it up beyond that, and I, I understand, especially in your position there, there's yeah. only so much you can say. So I'm not going to push you on that. But the reason I bring it up is one of the main things was he was because it was marketed as such of him being. Oh yeah, the at your y- yeah, your yeah. relationship with him that he was going to be there on Saturday yeah. at your your art gallery. Yeah. So months months ago, before before we even got back together for this year. Um, I, I was at home in Texas and he was, I think in Maui still or something. And he called me, we we're talking and he asked me kind of what, what I've been doing. Well, we're just catching up, you know? And, um, I told him I was literally painting when he called and, you know, I, was, I, I had this art show in Vegas that was originally lined up for the first leg that was supposed to be like, whatever that was, May or something. When, when he, when, when he, he lost rehab. shows because of rehab. Right? Yeah. So but I told him about the art show and he goes, great, I'm coming. I want to, I want to, I want to be there. I want to help you sell some art. And, and of course, which is great for me. You sure. Know, Cause I don't, I, I get it. I don't have the, the marquee name. And, right. You know what I mean? And to get, to get him there. would It's a great hook. Yeah. A great. Yeah. And, 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 and it was his idea, which is even better. Right. You know, so, so I, I said, great. And then of course that went, that first leg went away and then I rescheduled and, and, you know, ultimately it was all geared up for it. And of course, Joe was going to come. Everybody was going to come. Right. Joe, Brad, Tom, everybody was going to come. And, uh, I knew it was, look, it's always risky, uh, advertising. Somebody's going to be there that, that I have no control over. The line is always subject to change. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always put that in. Yeah. That gets you off the hook. You know, I bring that up because I do, I do a lot of remote broadcasts. And for a couple of years, I was doing this show from, uh, from once a month from the rainbow with a live audience in LA. That's right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I would always have all these huge names and 98% of the time those names showed up, but to get any time I do a, a bowling event for the Dio cancer fund and we raise money and I, I put my celebrity team out and I always tell whoever's doing the, <laughs> The marketing put subject to change yeah, an because asterisk. it gets you off the hook you know i yeah. mean not that you want that to happen Correct. but shit happens yeah and the gallery the gallery owners understood that because they've they've dealt with celebrity artists or you know celebrities before and they were perfectly aware you know but i felt like you know steven was very sincere and in in, in in leading up when we were playing here you know it, I, you know i knew it was on his calendar you know and he would tell me every couple couple shows you know when it, you know it's on my calendar i'm coming to your show and the same with the rest of the guys in the band and and so none of us foresaw you know what what happened ultimately so um obviously you know brad uh, brad showed up and 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 it just so happened that 
ZZ Top was just playing. Uh, right in the building. Almost in the same right. r- room, you know, the same building. And I go way back with those guys, you know, so. Well, we'll get to that. I want yeah. to get your whole story. Yeah, so yeah. They, you know, they, they came and Eric Singer from Kiss came and yep. uh, Fitzy and Todd from Slash's band came because mm-hmm. I've known those guys. So uh, I was super appreciative that of the turnout. Yeah. Um, so it was a, it was a good time. Your, your artwork is amazing, man. It really Thank is. You. And I, I, uh, looking at those. So, for, so for people that want, as obviously this is radio, if you want the visual of John's art, what's the best website again? Where should they go to see the images? Uh, well, my website is super creatively titled John Douglas.com. Well, that's, uh, which but is, that's what you want. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's amazing. Nobody else had that. It's probably uh, fairly you know common how many name. emails I get. Because uh, the most famous John Douglas is FBI profiler that wrote Mindhunter and that uh, Silence of the Lambs was based on this guy. He invented serial killer profiling for the FBI, and his name is John Douglas. I get email for him all the Wants time. Wants to buy it? All the time. He wants to buy it. No, no, from people wanting me to investigate oh. cases. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. Well, you kidding. know, I didn't know who that guy was, but when I looked for you on social media because I helped push out about your event, I was like, uh, that's the one that kept coming up yes. on whatever platform it was. I'm like, that doesn't look like JD from Aerosmith. <laughs> I know it. I don't. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I got in early on the on the whole website thing, but that's that's not a. It's a. It's basically my portfolio, but it has all the drums and guitars that I've painted over the years, and then it's got the fine art that I do, and and all the other stuff, and and then you can obviously go contact now. Mo- all that art is at an amazing gallery here in Vegas, and it'll be there f- until. At least till January. Oh, I was going so, to ask you about that. Yeah, so, so the gallery was the, the the so Friday was a public thing. Saturday, what I went to was more of a private thing. You, yeah. you mentioned some of the rock guys there, but that stuff will stay up on the walls there. Yeah. So what? people coming to Vegas between now and like you say January. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, then go. Then absolutely go check it out. I didn't know it was staying there. Yeah. So it, where it is, because I walked around a little <laughs> bit before I found the gallery. Because there's a few galleries in there, and it's yes. massive. Yes. But it, there's the Venetian and the Palazzo here in Vegas, and there's this thing that cuts through both big indoor upscale mall called the Canal Shops. Grand Canal Shops. Grand Canal yeah. Shops. So yeah. if you go there, you want to find. It's more on the Palazzo, Palazzo side, side. Yep. right? I was on the whole other side. Yeah, I was too. <laughs> and, and, and I'm talking to my friends I was trying to meet and we're talking. It was like, but uh, you want to go on the Palazzo side and you want to find, it's called An Amazing? An Amazing Gallery. There's like an AG logo there. And a lot of my stuff is in the window. But yes, it's it's at the Palazzo side. Yeah. And when you say your stuff, if you're a rock fan, you can't miss your stuff. Because a lot of your paintings are of music figures. Whether yeah. it be Aerosmith guys, Kiss guys, ZZ Top, Jimi Hendrix. Bon Jovi. I mean, I saw a bunch of stuff. Even newer people like Harry Styles. I mean, there's everything up there. So you got to see what John does with these paintings. It's it's so impressive. And again, if you're coming to Vegas, check it out. Otherwise, go to his site, johndouglas.com, and you can see what he's done. Now, let's go way, way back. When we were talking about you coming on to do this, and I was getting, you sent me a couple bullet points about your history. Some Some I knew, some I did not know. Yeah. As a musician, so you you were from Texas. Yep. And your your first band was Kick Tracy. That was that that was that was my first band by any any stretch of the imagination. My first the the uh, many bands in high school around Texas and 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 stuff. And then I was a band called XOX in Houston, and that's when I first met the ZZ Top guys and started painting stuff for them. Uh, Kick Tracy was an LA band, and uh, they got signed to RCA. 89 ish something like that Mm -hmm. and uh they needed to change drummers and so i got a a referred by uh, bobby rock and i think bloss both of those drummers are from houston we all know each other and so they threw my name in and and bloss elias is from houston yep he lives he's lived here forever yeah yeah yeah, yeah, i didn't know that okay and bobby rock's from houston and uh i think we all three went to different high schools but same time we, we all knew each other so anyway, so I I joined Kick Tracy and um, and moved to L.A. and uh, so yeah, they were they're L.A. guys and I'm I was from I'm from Texas. So do you, so you did how many records with them? We did two records. Um, first one I think came out in '91. It's funny because we're still we're like I think we're on the Rolling Stone top fifty hair metal bands, which I never 
yeah, we had hair and we were from L- L.A. I hate that and, term, but. Yeah. And I know, me too. And and I think we're still, I think we're kind of thought of as like an 80s band, even though the first record didn't come out till 91. But, you know, we were, we looked and we were marketed like everything before us. Right. And they were an L.A. band. And so, but we had the unfortunate timing that our first record came out when Nevermind came out. Right. You I was know, just going to say, you, you, the bands was, that, if you got out in 87, 88, 89, you had a couple years yeah, you before, a, as I call it, the gate came crashing down. Yeah. The gate that was Nevermind. Yeah. And, and Nirvana. Exactly. Yeah. So you you hit, like, <laughs> the day it came out, yes. or was it? <laughs> so, I mean, I, I mean, I can remember doing our first... Uh, you know, uh, tours and even promo for the album, I think, around the country. And I remember, you know, meeting the fans and the, and just the groundswell of it. You know, have you have you heard of this band Nirvana? And it was just, it was just that's the way it, the way it was. And and because uh, it, it was, was a good band, uh, Kick Tracy was a good band. And there were so many bands that fell into that category that made yeah. good music but just got squashed because of the timing of what happened with the scene change. And yeah. I, I've talked about it many times. I've talked about it in documentaries. I mean, I've been in this next year is my 40th year doing this. And I, so I've seen it and lived through it all. And uh, I've never seen anything that harsh and abrupt and overnight yeah. as that change. Yeah. And the sad part about it is there were some really good records that were made 91, 92. The, even bands that had earlier histories that were making new music at that time. Yep. Uh, Warrant made a great record at that time. Couldn't get arrested Didn't, with it. But, yeah. because it, but there was a lot of that. And then there were bands that never got off the ground because of that shit timing that you were talking about. Yeah. Did, when you mentioned Bloss being involved, now that I'm thinking about it, did Dana Strong Dana produce... Strong produced the first record he did right yeah 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 yeah. so that that obviously was the the connection where Bloss threw my name in and of course Bobby Rock played with uh, Dana and Mark and Vinnie Vinnie Vincent Vincent. right so you know it was just kind of that whole six degrees of separation deal for me and 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 the drumming community so it's you know I get asked a lot especially at at art events you know which which came first drum you know drums or Art and that's what I was going to ask you. Actually, yeah. that's what I mean, exactly I was going to ask you. I'm a drummer. I would bang down my mom's pots and pans, you know, and, and long before I could even hold a crayon, you know. So, and and I've always been a, a drummer, even never stopped, you know. It's just I, I had to, you know, I was getting older, and you know, again the whole kick Tracy thing, and you know, I had a daughter, and I wasn't making any money. We weren't surviving, you right. know, and I, I had to let go of that dream. And uh, to be what I felt, you know, was to be a responsible dad right. and and a member of society and stuff. And, and it just so happens I, I went back to Texas. And at that point, I had been painting drums for many people, uh, but specifically... Um, Frank and, and the guys from ZZ Top painting drums and guitars and so let me let me backtrack you there yeah no 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 it's yeah. fine but this is this is interesting so you, you're you're in bands before Kick Tracy gets a deal RCA all this all this buzz all this uh, you know the, the of the time the, the, the comes out doesn't happen because of the scene change. And then that's when you decide to go. Were you? Did you take art classes? Did you take painting or just pick it up? Self high school. I took band and art. In, in public school, that's that, that's how I learned to play drums, marching band, and uh, and playing to records, and um, and art was just I took it in high school. I just but but those were my two, and still are those are my two passions, and um, I I never I never stop I never stop doing either one. And you know when when you're in a band, regardless of of their level, there's always art direction you need a logo you need a backdrop maybe you're doing show posters or flyers or you know maybe you're working on album covers I've, I've always done that in every band I'm in as well as just side stuff and then I started I started painting my drums early on uh, because I wanted my stuff to look cool and I had the capability and it, it just spread to the guys so the, from, fir- the first thing you painted on was drums uh, or did yeah. you start painting traditionally no, like on uh, no, a canvas? No, I never. I didn't canvas the stuff you saw there. Yeah. That's recent. That's like in the last tw- twelve years. So your whole like trip that. initially was putting artwork on drums. Yeah. And you d- did you do it for yourself initially on your own drums? Yeah. I just wanted my stuff to look cool. And, and what unique. what were what was the earliest stuff you were doing? Were is it just colors? Or were we actually drawing things? Or um, well, I was doing. I started doing my kick drum head real early on, band logos and stuff like that. That was a no brainer, and then. And then I didn't have the money. Like I started on a 
five piece orange sparkle, no brand drum kit, you know, and as I got into other bands, you know, like Rush, when I when I was a freshman in high school, all the senior drummers were Rush fans, understandably, and I didn't never had never heard of them before. But I wanted to be like senior drummers, you know. So I took a deep dive into Rush, and then of course, the first thing you got to do is get more drums, right. you know. So and I couldn't afford to find the matching one so I would get whatever I could get cheap at garage sales or whatever you know red sparkle or black drum and and the 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 art part of me was just like I can't have a jelly bean kit so I took everything apart and I wrapped everything in in chrome contact paper that I got at the grocery store so I made everything match and you know from 20 feet away on stage it looked like a chrome drum kit so that was my first foray into customizing drums and I started adding weird stuff. My dad worked at Shell Oil as a research chemist, and he would bring me home like these broken gauges, and I started putting them on my drums, and I hooked up dryer vent hoses to my kick drums, and I told everybody they were air-cooled, and just silly stuff inspired by my Did idols. Alex Van Halen do that? Yeah, but I, I did it before him. Did and, you really? Uh, yeah, I did it in so, 1979, and he he did it at 5150, Right. In 86, I pointed that out to him. Is when I, uh, <laughs> anyway, but but I was inspired by all everything that Alex Van Halen did and and uh, both visually and as a drummer and as well as, you know, the drum kits of Myron Grumbacher and, you know, all the cool kits. There, now, there's a super underrated guy when oh, you talked about the... Yeah, I was as a really, drummer and, and... Yeah, I was really glad when Pat Benatar recently went in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that they acknowledged him and they brought him out to play. I haven't seen it yet, but yes, I He to, plays, I he comes, they introduce him and bring him out because I felt he should have been included with them because as, as a kid, I saw Pat Benatar super early on and, you know, I was... I mean, her voice is amazing, of course, but I, but I, you know, I love Neil's playing, but I was, I never forget it when I went to see, this is like 80, 81, and I went to see him and he did something visually that I've never seen anybody do. He had, his kick drum had some sort of like green gel or water in it. So that every time he hit the kick drum, it was transparent in the front. You'd see like an ocean wave kick up. Wow. He had some, I don't, I still don't know what you it sure was. you sure you weren't on something? No, no, I was in high school. <laughs> I would have been, my parents would have killed me. But there was like this green, like, I don't know if it was a gel or some sort of gel, or maybe it was just, maybe it looked like a gel and it was a lighting Maybe effect. it was a lighting thing, yeah. But I, it I was so, it looked like there was like a fluid and every time the kick drum, you saw it jump. All his kits were super creative and he was a, a badass drummer, yeah. super energetic, and uh, yeah. Yeah, he's a guy that doesn't get enough, uh, uh, I don't know if he still plays, but Agreed. it was great to see him him out there with them. So, well, he played with... He played with them. We're just yeah, yeah, just the one yeah, song yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So so you were so you were in it sounds this is interesting because you were certainly drawn to the instrument and to playing it yes. because you were doing it and yeah. you were active but you were also drawn to how to make drums look cooler, right? Yeah. yeah. And 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 who were the besides Myron, who were some of the other people that you saw that you were like, Man, I could run with that or I'd like to well, that influenced you to do that. Yeah, I mean certainly Alex Van Halen. Not that was not so much custom painting, but super creative uh drum kits, how they were set up, you know, the long kick drums and yeah. and uh um all of Van Halen was inspirational to me, you know, uh, even uh, obviously Edward and Dave, you know, I mean, just Van Halen as a, when they hit the stage was jaw dropping and I saw them open for Black Sabbath, you know, and uh, so now that's a that, that's a notorious tour because everybody says that was when Sabbath was on fumes. Yes. And everyone was saying and Van Halen, Van Halen was on fire. Yeah. Yeah. So literally, you know, literally and opening song, you know, yeah, so yeah, yeah it was. It was. You saw that. Huh? I saw two shows in Texas. I did two shows in Houston back two nights, and I was at both of them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. have memories of it? Oh yeah. Photo. I got photos of it. To see Van Halen that early on. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. Wow. I have. A, I, ha, I. I. Back then, my thing was I would draw portraits again. That's always been my favorite thing. That was just drawing pencil back then because I didn't know how to paint. So I would draw my favorite bands and artists and stuff like that. So I drew a picture of Edward Van Halen, and I, I met them after their first Sabbath show, and I have a photo of Ed and I, 1978, holding this drawing that I did, that I still have, that he signed. So fast forward 20 years, I started working for Van Halen in 98, and I have a, I had the photo of that, like on my Van Halen work box, and Ed loved it, you know, that 
20 years earlier as a fanboy. Yeah. You know, I had met him and he signed this drawing that I that I did of him, you know. And I remember Al, once I got, was there for a while with Van Halen, Al asked me, did, what did you do? Did you, you have a picture of me and you together, or did you know? I said, and I said, hey, you were probably a dick to me. And he laughed and said, Yeah, I probably was. <laughs> so professionally, when you when you beyond your own drums, when you started to do art on drums, who was the first kind of gig you had to do it for? Was it was it uh, Frank Beard? I'll tell you, it was you know because then after that I started painting the actual shells of the drum, you know, so. Um, and I was playing in a kit, uh, a band in town that got really popular. We just couldn't get the deal, you know, but it, popular enough that the guys from ZZ Top would come see my band play. What were they this called? XOX. Oh, okay. Two girls, two guys, you know, uh, mid 80s rock, you know. And um, so eventually, you know, Frank, I, I met Frank at one of our shows and he said, man, your drums are cool. Who did that? You know, and I said, I did that. And he goes, would you ever want to paint a drums for me? And I was, Never occurred. I'm like, well, yeah, okay. So, I, I don't know how long between you know, so that some drums were ordered, and that takes a while because they come from Japan. But in the meantime, I was working at a music store in Houston, which is the last real job I had, and I had one of my snare drums up on the counter that I had painted because I was working on it on company time, you know, and uh, a guy came in that happened to be the drum tech for, I forget what band, but he got my, he saw the drum and he said, oh, that's cool. And he got my name and number. And six months later he called me and he was a drum tech for Guns N' Roses for Steven Adler mm -hmm. in 1987, eight Appetite. Well, I mean, right. GNR was the biggest band right. on the planet. Yeah. So the first drums that I ever painted for anybody other than me was for Steven Adler. And what'd you do on that kit? I did. I did two kits for him. I did one that looked like it was made out of granite or or stone, uh, just uh, you know, cracked rock. They looked like they were made out of stone. Mm -hmm. And the other kit was just a for his house. I did w which was just a custom, like a purple pearl or blue pearl, white. You know, just looked like a Cadillac uh, paint job. But I do I did not those didn't seem. Much I've seen a couple of pictures of that granite looking kid. He did I think he I think they played with the stones with that. But what shortly after he was he was out of the band. Right. You know, so th those were technically the first drums I painted for anybody, like the biggest band on the planet at the time. And I'm painting them in my garage in Cypress, Texas. Because uh, I had the ZZ top drums on order. So the second ones I did were for Frank of ZZ. And what did Frank what did you do initially on Frank's drums? Frank's that let's see the what tour was that? It's a blur. The first one I did was, um, I, I want to think it was the Afterburner kit with the flames. Now, when you uh, when you do these, you know, I want I want you to give me give the audience some some insights on some of the other drum, drummers you've done. But when you do these, as you evolve into doing this and and do more and more of it, does the direction on as to what goes on the drums come from the drummer or do they say to you, Hey John, just run with it and, and come up with something for me. And how does it work? Do you, do you, do you come, do you throw ideas at them or do they say, no, I want, you know, a, a bunch of, uh, I don't say it was Peter Chris. I want a bunch of cats on there. Come up with cool cats or something. Yeah. You know, how do you do it? It varies. Uh, early on, that was still the, you know, the, the album tour cycle for bands, especially like ZZ, their productions were very much geared towards the album and the art direction and everything was, that's the way most of the, certainly arena rock level stuff was very, very focused for, you know, the album and then they were going to tour that album, you know, ZZ Top Recycler and their tour, everything the production wise was recycler oriented. So like that, that tour, I, I discussed with Frank, okay, what can we do? You know, and, and I know his first idea was, Let's do, you know, every drum a different tin can. You know, like snare can would be a, a snare drum would be a, a tuna fish can and one would be a Coke can and one would be a can of beans or, you know, a recycled thing. But then he changed his mind and, and um, I forget what, I did two kits for that tour because it was such a long tour. I don't remember what one of them, the other one was, uh, we called it Toxic Waste where they look like yellow barrels 
industrial like barrels with monsters breaking out of them mm. you know with paint and stuff and we called it the toxic waste uh, kit so early on it was back and back and forth ideas uh, with him and um and then like the i think the at, right after frank went on that tour their opening act was extreme and so paul geary the drummer for extreme and they were more than words was breaking mm -hmm. And Paul so, also lives here now. Yeah. 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 And um, so, you know, same thing. I guess they he sees Frank's kid. Hey, pay, who paid you your drums pretty soon? I was painting. Word of mouth stuff I was starts happening. Ex, extreme, I was painting Extreme Drum Kit in my hotel room on a Kick Tracy tour. So I would play a gig, go back to my hotel room, and paint, uh, paint drums for other people.